I'm just so grateful to be alive so I can continue to help people. Oh my gosh, look at the harbor. This was a home. The cars with full gas tanks that reached the fire, they were exploded. Lahaina on the island of Maui. An area of natural beauty. Million dollar mansions. Designer shops and some of Hawaii's most luxurious harbour-side restaurants and hotels. Oh my gosh, look at the harbour. Oh my goodness, look at all these houses. Lahaina, in the local dialect, translates as cruel sun. Today, they are cursing the cruel flames. Our correspondent saw for herself the horrors the wildfires inflicted here in just a matter of hours. This is the heart of Lahaina's downtown hotels, restaurants, businesses, completely obliterated. You can see in the distance some of the wreckage still smouldering a couple of days after these wildfires hit and the smell of the smoke hangs heavy in the air. This here area of Lahaina and this is where many people came to try and escape the full force of the flames. The flames arrived with terrifying speed. This area was packed with tourists and diners. The flames now devour their pick at the best shops and restaurants. The wildfires have been fanned by a recent hurricane, making them even more ferocious. Cars exploding. Oh. Dozens are dead, and residents are warned to expect more bodies to be found. The stories of those who survived are simply remarkable. With just moments left to act, Idris and Damon jumped into the ocean and clung to a jetty for hours to stay alive. And we keep hearing explosions. We were scre hearing screams out of a horror movie. You know, I called the cops again. They couldn't come. The third time I called them, they said, you have to go in the water. And I said, you want us to jump in the hurricane? It's black, you know. The ocean was pulling us at the same time. We were trying to had debris falling on us, we're trying to get wet and not burn. I didn't think, so. I just prayed and I said, God, please, not today. I, I, I didn't know what to say. I was, this is it. Most of this town has been destroyed. Wisps of smoke and ash, pretty much all that's left of homes and businesses. I had choked smoke and I couldn't tell where, where I was sometimes. And sometimes I could, you know, it's a short road, front street. If you guys walk down the street, you see it's completely burnt. And I feel like we're not getting the help we need, you know? Oh my God. Looking up the hillside, all the homes are gone, all the buildings are gutted. Uh, it, it looks like, like a war zone, like from just total destruction. The final curtain coming down on historic buildings like the community's Pioneer Theatre and Inn, dating back to 1901. It was devastating. It felt like a war zone, and it was still fresh. I could see trees burning, I could feel the smoke, I could feel the heat, and it was basically like, like another pandemic. To explain it, it was a ghost town, very apocalyptic, and as our mobile unit was driving through, we started seeing some people come out of the woodworks, like survivors. Only a few days ago, this harbor was buzzing with fishing trips, sightseeing tours, and party boats. Tourists and holidaymakers are evacuating Hawaii, incredulous at what has happened in such a short space of time. We had just driven through two days earlier and it was 
beautiful and bustling, and then coming back on the way back and seeing um, just absolute devastation. It was really heartbreaking. When we came on the charter bus to come here, they took us right through Lahaina, and we were able to see up close and firsthand the devastation and how everything we saw the day before was so lush and beautiful is just completely gone now. At the airport, holidaymakers, still in shock, wait for their chance to fly home. We were pretty isolated, kind of had no idea what was going on because we had you know, no cell service, no TV, no internet. Uh, all we could see was sort of the smoke and the, and the horizon. Um, and it kind of burned uh, all night until uh, yesterday morning. Um, and then yesterday, you know, the alarms kind of blared at the hotel, uh, you know, telling us to evacuate. It was scary seeing, uh, driving through, you couldn't see any structures of the buildings. It gone, looked like a bomb went off. All the, the cars with full gas tanks that reached the fire, they were exploded. For those who had no choice but to stay, the reality of what has gone on here is impossible to comprehend. The community has set up places to help those who've lost everything. This high school has become a relief centre for those now homeless. Candy escaped on her moped, grieving for those who couldn't get away. All I want to do is help people. I'm just so grateful to be alive. People are found in houses in a huddle, holding each other because the fire surrounded their homes before they could even get out. There was nowhere to go. And these are beautiful homes that are very old and they're made of wood. Those went up like a matchstick. Nobody had mourning. Christina was on holiday. Her hotel was evacuated and she has spent two nights at the shelter. The Red Cross is here. The people are so kind. You know, we have food, we have water and a place to shower and people who love us. We must feel lucky. We feel very lucky, very blessed. Some essentials may be in short supply, but there's an excess of volunteers willing to help where they can. They lost everything. Everybody lost everything. We don't know how to feel. I don't know how you guys are supposed to feel. I'm, I'm a little worried because I have a four-month-old and a two-year-old. Um, I have dogs. The wildfires don't pause after dark, and neither do the fire crews. More than a dozen have lost their own homes in this disaster. This was a home. There's their car. Once daylight comes, the helicopter crews can get back to work eyeing up the enemy below, fighting a battle on the ground from the air. Hawaii is no stranger to wildfires, but never on this scale. The president has heard the pleas for help. We have just approved a major disaster declaration for Hawaii, which will get aid in the hands of the people desperate, desperately needing help now. They've lost... Uh, Anyone who's lost a loved one whose home has been damaged or destroyed is going to get help immediately. All the bodies recovered so far were found outside, but the flames crept up so many driveways, reaching so many front doors, the miserable truth is more remains will be recovered as rescue teams search inside homes and vehicles, people trapped, unable to outrun the fire. Right now, our focus is on finding uh, any, uh, any missing persons. Uh, we want to reunite families. We want to give people information, uh, whether they're family members at one of our shelters uh, and, or whether they um, are among those that have perished. Uh, we need to get that information to our, to our citizens. A devastating collision of factors is being blamed. Even just the materials that all of these places are built with, they're all... Um, at high risk of wildfire, and then they're surrounded by lands that have gone out of agriculture and are now just standing fallow and unmanaged. And so um, when you add in, you know, hurricane force winds or or any extra little variable to make it even more severe, we we 
we were all kind of waiting for the day that something like this would happen. The majority of wildfires are now contained, but the horror of what happened here will last for years. The inferno chased people into the ocean, terrified drivers trying to flee, stole power and means of communication. Hawaii, a place of smiles and sunshine, now terribly scarred.